inspiration for the music that you write really i get my inspiration from just life itself and different experiences i i draw you know inspiration from from various things but it's all connected to to love really mm -hmm. you've had some very exciting collaborations in your career to this point can you tell me about some of the music that has come out of those collaborations I wrote a song called Love to the World. Walk the mile on the road, felt the pain we've overcome. Do our best, we're not perfect in this life. Baby, you make it worth it. <laughs> Welcome to Cool Life Podcast. Brought to you by TheRealThingDating.com www.TheRealThingDating.com Polydor Records for out scouting. This girl grabbed my bangs oh. and ran my head right to the speaker. Oh. And everyone here like this, yeah. When we shot the scene in Goodwill Hunting, I didn't know who most of these people were at the time. I mean, they weren't stars. It was Gus Van Sant that, that directed it. Gus Van Sant was on the floor with Matt Damon's Will character. Hunting. I didn't even know who Matt Damon was at that time. I'm Eva John. I'm a former candidate for local government. I was a children's television entertainer, and I love this world, and I believe we should take care of each other and have a lot of fun along the way. Welcome to Cool Life. Here we go. <laughs> and welcome to Cool Life Podcast. I'm Eva John, and today we are joined by musician, composer, and great talent, Rosita Stone. Rosita, welcome. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you. I'm so very happy to have you on Cool Life Podcast today. And Rosita, can you please tell me what is your website? It's rositastone.com. So it's Rosita, not Rosetta. Everyone always says Rosetta Stone. Yeah, well, oh. it's, tied, it's tied into my name, but it's Rosita, Mexican. R-O-S-I-T-A stone.com. Thank you. And I love being able to talk about your music and the work that you do. And I know for just some things I've discovered about you that you come from a musical family. Can you tell me about the musical heritage? Yes, of course. Uh, my mother uh, played guitar and sang uh, Mexican ranchera songs all the time. <laughs> so she was like, la, 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 you know? She's always doing that. And my dad uh, played the fiddle and my brother is very accomplished. He's plays, he's a multi-instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. And so music was around a lot. And we also lived in different places. We traveled with my dad's work and we absorbed a lot of different influences from different places. So it was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> Really yeah. sad when you can see that it has contributed to the person you are today. And if I understand, um, also your grandmother was a yes. musician. In the Puebla town of Torreon, Mexico, in Mexico, yes. So my grandmother also played guitar and sang. Nice when yeah. you, you're able to continue that ability and that heritage. At what point in your life did you realize that music was important to you? Well, I started as a dancer and music was important because it allows a dancer to move. And um, so I was very much into music from when I was a very little, obviously, like a little girl. And I, uh, as, a, as a dancer, I became a professional uh, dancer. And then I started to sing more. We always had a piano at home and I'd learn um, by ear just hear stuff and then I would just my brother did the same thing we 
figure it out on the piano. And so we always had the piano available. Wow. And so the music was always there. It was always there for us. And I just, as I got older, I, I sang more and I started to sound better. You know, I, I always loved to sing, but uh, yes. So I realized I, you know, that I, I really loved what I, you know, music and dance from a very, very young age. But it was mostly dance until I was um, a teenager, until I was, uh, you know, late teens. It was mostly dance. As you were saying, because you are a trained dancer, yeah. do you find that, you know, on top of being a musician, a composer, that your training in dance has contributed to the work that you do Absolutely. as a musician? Absolutely. Well, I'm a, I'm, I predominantly call myself a producer. Like I produce everything and I direct music. I'm a musician, a songwriter, composer, producer. I produce my, you know, a lot of my videos and my, um, my songs I co-produce or produce them. And yes, the dance training. And also um, I'm, I trained and I'm also self-taught on for many things. And it, yes, it, the, the dance contributes 100% because I'm a beat junkie. Like, you know, I remember in, in class, they would, you know, we, we would, uh, there was a piano player and we would dance um, to different timings. It was three, four, seven, eight, 11, eight, four, four, whatever. And when the pianist would start playing, the first one to raise their hand to say what the time signature is in the song, uh, it was always me. And people couldn't yeah. figure out how I knew that, but it's because I, I don't know, I just figured it out. I figured out where the one is in the beat, like figuring out that really quickly. And <laughs> so, and that's really helped tremendously as, uh, as an artist and as a musician and playing drums comes naturally to me. Cause it's all the stuff I'm doing with my body, right. You know, so it just put it, you know, drumsticks in my hand and uh, people say, oh, you've been playing for years. It's like, well, <laughs> I don't sit at a drum kit often, but I can really play when I sit down and I kind of, you know, you know, uh, sort of orient myself and then start going like, oh, I love this, you know. Well, so when you're yeah, feeling it. Oh yeah, and percussion, because I know where the, you know, you know, you know, all that and just learning a little bit of tricks on the um the hi hat and stuff like that. Uh, it comes naturally and I love it. So I love playing drums as well. So that yes, it, and it helps with the rhythm rhythmically with when I'm playing piano, da 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 like just to make it sound amazing, you know, like I've, I've taught people like who don't know how to play piano or just learning or, you know, I'll say, you know, give me a little bit of time in one session. I'll, you know, and you're going to go home and people are going, oh, my God, you sound so amazing on the piano because it's just rhythmic, like finding certain chords and doing certain rhythms. And and yeah, so it's it really helps with everything, actually. <laughs> it really does. Well, if you have a foundation of feeling the music physically in your body, and then yeah. it's working its way out and turning into something new. That, that's right. Uh, the rhythm is something that's almost a, a biological experience. It is. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Rosita, do you recall what was the very first song that you ever wrote? <laughs> For fun, like as a kid? Just ever, 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 ever. ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> I remember the first song that, um, the first song that I wrote was um probably oh my gosh oh my goodness uh i you know i don't even have a title for it but i do remember it mm -hmm. i don't even have a title for it and and then i the first song i actually wrote was a co-write when i was in the eighth grade mm -hmm. wow. and this guy had this song and he said he sang it to me i said oh yeah let's do this and that with it and then we co-wrote it wow <laughs> In class, you know, for the teacher watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But still to start those abilities at such a young age. And I think it shows that it's something that has been a part of your life. Yes, for sure. Yes. And Rosina, can you tell me for upcoming performances, uh, what's coming up for you? On June 16th, not tomorrow, Sunday, but two Sundays from now, wow. June 16th, Father's Day, there's something called the Fiesta Week. And it's a big, big festival here in Durham region, Canada. And it's put on by the 
Oshawa Folk Arts Council. Okay. And it's called Fiesta Week, it's the 50th anniversary. So I am performing right at four o'clock and I'm a headliner because it's a multicultural festival. There's different pavilions and you know, the Romanian pavilion, the Portuguese pavilion, you know, there's different ones. And I'm going to get up on stage and represent Mexico. I'm Mexican-Ukrainian, so I'm going to get up and maybe say a few words in Ukrainian. And I'm going to do some beautiful, a couple of, because it's multicultural, a couple of songs in Spanish, like some of Mexico's most famous folk songs and do them on the piano in my own way. Great. That sounds so. exciting. Yeah, so that's that's good, and it's it's right here. And you know, I I almost never perform where like in the area where I live, mm. and so the, and this is a good one. This is a big one. So it's gonna be a parade before, and then the concert uh, celebration at Memorial Park in in Oshawa. So and there's a big music scene out this way. So there's, there's gonna be a lot of people, and, and it's Father's Day, so it's gonna be a, a big event. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. It's on, you know, those band shell stages, you know, the, it's been there for a few decades. So it's like the old style, big band shell, you know, and yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be good. I'm really looking forward to it. So, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to do solo piano. I mean, I love to stand up and I love to dance and I love to to do all that. But for this, I'm going to do something powerful like that. Well, have a wonderful show. And- Thank you. For those who want to come out and see you live, something to look forward to, June 16th, 2024. Yes. Rosita, for your song, Luz Estela, that music, it's really absolutely mesmerizing. It is very, very profound for me to even listen to now, even sitting at the piano singing it. You know, I'm contemplating doing that one on Father's Day for the multicultural event truly i hope you will because when you share something those that writing experience and music it's alive it has something in there that is touching you it touches others it has touched me and i think every opportunity you have to touch people with authentic beautiful music that you created rosita stone i think you've got my vote for yes Performance. Thank you. So I'm doing a few songs of like that are created by Armando Manzanero, who's a one of the most famous composers in Mexico, a Mexican composer. He died mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, and I did a tribute to him. One of the songs, Adoro, is the most popular, famous love song of all time in Mexico. So I'm going to do that. Maybe another one. And Luz Now that we're talking about it, maybe I will do that. I I don't do what's expected, and I always change things like even if it's a song that people might know oh, i will never do it the same way ever i'll never do a song in the same way that people have heard it before i'll always do it differently and and take it somewhere else so it's going to be me on the piano and i find that i'm the most powerful that way mm-hmm. so so yeah thank you for helping me solidify this well, it's a powerful song and i thank think you. in any form it's going to touch people and that's going to be great. Now, do you have a favorite song of your own that you've written? Um, oh gosh, I have all my songs are like my children. Right. Um, a lot of people write a lot of songs and then they pick one that they like and they throw the rest away. I don't have throwaways. When I write a song, it's a something. I don't, um, you know, like people writing for an album, they'll write a whole bunch of songs and then pick. I'm not like that. And uh, every song is special and every song that I, you know, so, oh gosh, I have a lot of songs. Most of my songs are not online for people to hear. They're not on, um, you know, most of my songs are not out there, even though I have, you know, songs out there. Most of my songs are, are still not released. And so I have, obviously I like, I love my song, Love to the World. And I love the piano version of it. And uh, that, that's not actually out there. <laughs> Recorded version is, but I love I love all of them. And then the song in Spanish I really love "Luz Estelar" means starlight. I really really love that one. That's a beautiful song. And as a matter of fact, we're going to take a break and we're going to play "Luz Estelar," which oh, is excellent. by Rosita Stone. And uh, before we do that, we're going to 
take a look at some of our viewer mail to remind you that if you want to send in your comments directly to Cool Life Podcast, send that to info at coollifeworld.com. That's C-O-O-L-I-F-E world.com. Keep it clean and we'll read it in the future show. For right now, I have a bit of viewer mail that came in regarding Chika O, oh, uh, the painter, beautiful, talented lady that had joined us. And and this is actually from H in Paris, France. It's pretty amazing. I know the podcast is seen as video and also heard on streaming services. Uh, so we are in North America, Canada, United States, and Great Britain are our wider audience. And then also other parts of Europe, uh, including France and parts of South Asia and Africa. So thank you so much. And so H is writing from Paris, France. We have a comment based on my interview with Chika O, oh, who is an artist, a painter, and facilitator of art classes and paint nights. And so H's comment from Paris, France is, hey, Eva, thanks, Eva. I really like part one and I couldn't wait for part two. So thank you. And I'd like to send that out to Chica O. Thank you. I appreciate all of our amazing guests and it's so nice to hear your feedback. Nice to know that we have women supporting women in the tough world of the arts and that this was very well received. We had another one. And so this came through Facebook for our interview with Chica O. And thank you so much from Soma Page saying, absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. I have to agree. I'm so impressed with Chica O and the direction that she is taking her art and her facilitation of art. So this is a comment for my interview with Paris Black for part four of the four-part interview. And this comment comes from J Jacobs 6077. Thank you so much. And they write, beautiful work, Paris. What a voice. And thank you so much. That is a really lovely comment. Uh, I have to agree, Paris is a hugely talented singer, songwriter, recording artist, and so much more. And so thank you. Your comments are welcome. You can write directly to info at coollifeworld.com. That's C-O-O-L-I-F-E world.com. And of course, your comments straight from YouTube or from Spotify or the other streaming services are always very welcome. And... I want to thank you all for your nice comments about our past shows. And right now, we're going to take a break to talk about our sponsors and supporters. We're going to hear Luz Estalvar by Rosita Stone. And we'll be back on Cool Life Podcast. Estamos el sol tu sonrisa me cura y brillas como un rayo de 
Those lonely days of lockdowns and isolation are gone for good. Go to www.therealthingdating.com That's www.therealthingdating.com It's time to share. Share your time, share your life, share your love. www.therealthingdating.com Join for free. Upgrade at any time, starting at just $5.99 a month. www.therealthingdating.com Because it's time. You're listening to The Cool Life Podcast. We'll be back in 3, 2, 1. And... We are back on Cool Life Podcast. I'm Eva John, continuing our conversation with Rosita Stone. Rosita, you are a highly accomplished musician. Can you tell me how many instruments do you play? Um, Well, I love anything anything percussive. I can play some guitar. I love piano. And I played some wind instruments when I was younger. And yeah, I just love, uh, you know, especially the the piano string, you know, and uh, the percussive instruments are my favorite, definitely. Um, know that it's really something when you're able to express yourself with many different instruments. And can you tell me at what point did you realize that you have an extraordinary musical talent? Well, I I count my voice as part of that musical talent, not just an, an instrument outside of myself, because the voice is an instrument. Um, jeepers. Um, when? I'm not even sure when I, I realized it. <laughs> but, I mean, even now, I'm I'm better than ever. So it's 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 sort of a present-day thing, you know. Um, you know and it's more lately. Than it's you know than before that hey you know I'm I can 
do a lot, you know, I can really nail this and I can really, it sounds amazing. And whether it's my voice or the voice and piano together. Yeah, it's been lately, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. Sometimes we don't realize it ourselves. Other people have been in awe of something that that we're doing. And, you know, music has been an important force in my life. And to the point where I almost took it for granted. And you don't realize that what you're doing isn't necessarily what other children are doing. You definitely had the kind of talent, as you were describing, where you were able to just play the piano by ear and that you were able to express yourself and just take music that you hear and repeat it on the piano without somebody saying, okay, go to this note, go to that note. Like that was just inside you. Absolutely. Well, I did take piano lessons for a short time when I was uh, a child and the lady would hit my knuckles with a pencil. Whack, whack if I hit the wrong note. And after that, I was, you know, I was not interested. So I stopped playing piano for a while Wow. Um, because of that, you know, it's going to be there at home and I didn't want to take lessons at all. And, you know, I'm sure if I took lessons conservatory and did the whole thing like that, I would have, you know, done a lot, but I didn't, I stopped. And then everything, you know, was by ear, right. <laughs> it was by ear before that. But, you know, after that, I never took another lesson. That was it. Right. And I just learned myself. <laughs> I'm so glad someone like that didn't you touch you. you know, because that's such a toxic way to interact with music and a little, a little abusive. And I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm glad that person didn't deter you altogether because exactly. your talent is a huge contribution to the industry. And for what you've been able to do as a musician, can you tell me, do you recall? What did it feel like the first time you went into a recording studio to record your own music? Yes. Um, I had already arranged it. I already produced it in my mind. I went in and I got the players and we went in and did it. So it was great. It sounded amazing. I was producing right from the beginning, you know, music, the you know, writing the song, producing it getting everyone involved, if there's other people involved, writing the parts or coming up with parts and things like that. So I was doing that from, from the beginning when I, when I went into the studio to record. That's pretty amazing. This is precisely what you were doing, turning your dream of your music into a reality that other That's people right. could enjoy forever. Right. And Rosita, can you recall... Was there a turning point in your life that went from you being someone who enjoyed music and realizing that you were going to be a stronger force as a musician and composer and producer? Well, when I went from being a dancer to into music, it was at that time. Mm -hmm. And that I, I was no longer just a dancer. I was a, uh, uh, you know, songwriter and performer. So that was, you know, when I was about 19, 20, you know, and I realized that uh, this is what I like to do as well. <laughs> so I wasn't just a dancer. I was, I was, you know, I could start writing songs and playing around with songs and things like that. So, yeah. It's amazing. I'm glad that you did enjoy that turning point and get to a place where you are now. And right now, we're going to take another break to talk about our sponsors and supporters. And we'll be back on Cool Life Podcast. Those lonely days of lockdowns and isolation are gone for good. Go to www.therealthingdating.com. That's www.therealthingdating.com. It's time to share. Share your time, share your life, share your love. www.therealthingdating.com Join for free. Upgrade at any time. Starting at just $5.99 a month. www.therealthingdating.com Because it's time. This is Cool Life Podcast. 
Please remember to subscribe to Cool Life on your streaming service and on YouTube as Hellenique Today. That's H-E-L-E-N-I-Q-U-E Today. Because that helps us to bring more cool stuff to your ears. You're listening to The Cool Life Podcast. We'll be right back. We are back on Cool Life Podcast. I'm Eva John, having our conversation with Rosita Stone. Rosita, during the pandemic, did you find that coming back, that the pandemic caused a setback in some of your work and some of the relationships in your musical career? It was the opposite. I did more than I've ever done in my life. Mm. I focused on writing, producing. I was in the studio, I was doing videos. I kept going. That's wonderful. When everybody, everybody stopped, I didn't stop. Right. No, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's I wasn't so, stopping. It's amazing to hear. No. <laughs> a lot of people do talk about how it was like a big kind of no man's land during the pandemic, so many places that had closed down and we hadn't figured out how to get people back into live venues and back into working together. So that's amazing that you stayed busy during the pandemic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I did I I did more then. I still have from that time three more songs and videos in the can waiting to, you know, to be released. Right. Still from that, you know, well from in the last two years. Yeah, I have still have three more to do yeah so got a lot of a lot of work done right i did i'm so glad to hear that Uh, rosita i've noticed there's a lot of depth in the music that you write and a lot to enjoy and to review even just as inspiration just for you know someone getting through their day and finding it uplifting can you tell me where do you get your inspiration for the music that you write? Really, I get my inspiration from just life itself and different experiences. That's what I draw from. I get my inspiration from people who are, are good and kind and compassionate. I don't necessarily get my inspiration from other artists or other musicians or other producers or that I don't really, I, I mean, I'll listen to music and I'll, I'll like it. I'll love it or not, but I don't necessarily get my inspiration from other artists or, or even you know, celebrities that it's, I'm the opposite of that. I don't, I'm not a celebrity um, worshiper. <laughs> right. So I don't get, you know, so that's a whole other thing. Um, Cause we're all human beings. Right. Um, and, you know, my inspiration comes from my love of animals. I have you know, six pets. Uh, wow. It comes from, comes from, you know, people who have been kind to me. Right. You know, it could come from an experience I have with a person. Right. Something yeah. deep and profound. So I, I draw, you know, inspiration from, from various things, but it's all connected to to love really Mm. that's a lovely source of inspiration and you've had some very exciting collaborations in your career to this point can you tell me about some of the music that has come out of those collaborations i wrote a song called love to the world walk the mile on the
was a collaboration with an American producer named Chris Flores. He's done a lot of stuff. He's in high demand and he's he's amazing. And he's he's worked with people like the Black Eyed Peas, like Fergie and Rihanna. He's done some work for and Guns N' Roses, like Slash, the guitar player, and lots, lots of different artists and groups. And he he loved what I was doing, so so we collaborated on something. It just turned out amazing, right. and we did it at a distance because it was during the pandemic, just the last part of the pandemic. And so I had never worked like that with somebody normally, especially a songwriting collaboration. I, I'd be in the same room as them. Mm-hmm. But I, I did, you know, the vocals here. I did, you know, I they were, they were produced here. And with Dennis Nieves, one of my uh, best friends and uh, somebody who I co-produce with all the time, we did the vocals at his studio. We produced them there. And then we sent them to L.A. And then he mixed it, uh, the rest. <laughs> yeah, so it turned out amazing, actually. Yeah. I think it's lovely that you're able to, even at a distance, make a, a beautiful song like Love to the World. And that's an, an important relationship through a collaboration. And that's great music that has come out of it. How did you first meet Chris Flores? I was introduced to him by another person. And I, and then we just started to, to chat. And he... I know that he has a lot of introductions and a lot of different people contacting him. He really has to love what he's doing. You know, it doesn't have a lot of time. Like most of us, we don't have a lot of time. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. And we just, we hit it off and he, he had some ideas and I had some ideas and, and it just clicked. Now, again, on the same song, love to the world, you also had the opportunity to bring in Eddie Christobel as a, a co-director. You directed, you produced um, the video for that uh, that song, yeah. uh, but you did get to work with with Mr. Christobel. And has he become a part of your team, or was that just a, a one-off for that project? We worked together. We worked together again, and then I worked with somebody with one of his somebody who was his. his um, I'd say assistant, but he's really good. Like, oh, yeah. So it's he's part of the family. Okay. And I've nice. worked with I've worked with others as well. He was great. You know, I, I um, Kevin Moore from DNA Cinema is awesome. He's the one that did uh, Lucas de la with me. Oh, okay. So, uh-huh. um, quite a project that uh, Lucas de la. I'm so glad that's something that has come to light in the world. So those partnerships really have been so fruitful. Yes. And and this ends part one of my conversation with Rosita Stone. Rosita, can you tell us once again, what is your website? Yes, it's rositastone.com, R-O-S-I-T-A, stone.com. Thank you. Yes. And please keep an eye out on the schedule for part two. In the meantime, I want to thank you so much for your time, Rosita. And I'm Eva John for Cool Life Podcast. Bye now.
for listening to the very end. Please remember to subscribe through your streaming service to get more access to our guest interviews. Also, please subscribe on YouTube to help support our podcast. Until next time, I'm Eva John for Cool Life Podcast. Thank you for turning me on.